The Big Bang Theory has long been the cornerstone of our understanding of the universe's birth. But as we delve deeper into the cosmic puzzle, some interesting challenges come to light. All of that begs a bunch of questions like, is the Big Bang in trouble? Is the Big Bang Theory wrong? Is it time to dethrone the Big Bang Theory? The phrase crisis in cosmology also is finding its way into a growing number of blogs and podcasts. But what exactly is behind this crisis and how seriously should we take it? All this and more will be discussed in today's episode of Eyes 200 M. If we want to examine any scientific theory, the first thing we need to do is understand what the theory assumes, what it predicts, and to compare those predictions with what's been measured. The big idea of the Big Bang came about as scientists began to investigate the mathematical properties of Einstein's general relativity. The theory of gravity that was put forth in 1915 to supersede Newton's law of universal gravitation. Unlike Newtonian gravity, general relativity brought gravity into a framework that was consistent with the speed of light being the cosmic speed limit was able to explain the orbit of Mercury and how its perihelion precessed over the centuries and predicted novel effects like the bending of starlight, gravitational lensing, gravitational time delays, and gravitational redshifts and blue shift. By the end of 1919, it was clear that general relativity succeeded where Newtonian gravity did not and that its consequences of space-time being a fabric whose curvature was determined by matter and energy could not be ignored. That's the first assumption, that general relativity is our theory of gravity. From there, people started searching for, finding, and working out the consequences of various exact solutions in general relativity. Unlike in Newtonian gravity, this is incredibly difficult. In Newtonian gravity, if you can describe the positions and masses of every object in your universe at any one moment in time, you can know the effects of gravity everywhere and always. But in Einstein's general relativity, only a few spacetimes are exactly solvable, and they're all relatively simple cases. For instance, we can solve an empty universe. That's Minkowski space. We can solve for a universe with one uncharged, non-rotating mass, the Schwarzschild solution. We can write down the equations for a universe containing one massive rotating object, the Kerr solution and we can solve the equations governing space-time for a universe that's uniformly filled with matter and radiation. We get the Friedman equations. This last option, as was recognized almost immediately, could represent our universe. If our universe is homogeneous, the same in all location, and isotropic, the same in all directions, even on average, even only on the largest of cosmic scales, the Friedman equations will tell us how the universe evolves over time. Specifically, it must evolve and cannot be static. It has to either expand or contract. When galaxies were identified as being objects outside of the Milky Way, and then observed to have greater redshifts at greater distances, it was clear that the picture of an expanding universe consistent with the Friedman equations, and hence an isotropic homogeneous universe, remained valid. One, but not the only. Interpretation of that involved a tremendous extrapolation, the Big Bang. What the Big Bang hypothesized was that the volume which the objects within our universe occupied increased over time, and hence the universe got less dense as time went on, as well as cooler, as light within it became shifted to longer wavelengths and lower temperatures. But in addition to extrapolating forwards, we could extrapolate backwards in time as well, to a hotter, denser state. In fact, there was no limit to this, in principle. We could go back to arbitrarily high temperatures and arbitrarily large densities, and if the Big Bang were correct, the act of expanding and cooling during the evolution of the cosmos would lead to three major predictions, in addition to the expanding universe. One a cosmic web of growing, evolving structure. If we go back in time, we should find galaxies that are smaller, less massive, filled with younger stars and are less evolved in their shape. Over time, they gravitationally grow and merge together, so galaxy clusters and a large cosmic web should be richer at late times. 
and close distances, and sparser at early times, and larger distances. And going way back in time, we should see eras where there are no galaxy clusters, no galaxies, and eventually not even any stars. The formation of structure is an enormous success for the Big Bang, with dark matter and dark energy being necessary, but sufficient ingredients to get our observations to match the model's predictions exquisitely. Galaxies grow, evolve, become richer in heavy elements, and cluster together in precisely the fashion that the Big Bang predicts. Even with the advent of modern deep galaxy surveys, the agreement is spectacular. 2. A low-energy, omnidirectional, leftover glow of radiation. If the universe were hotter, denser, and more uniform in the past, eventually you'd reach a point where it was so hot and dense that even neutral atoms couldn't form. The instant an electron bound to an atomic nucleus, a sufficiently energetic photon would come along and reionize that atom, preventing neutral atoms from stably forming. Only when the universe expanded and cooled sufficiently would these photons lose enough energy that the universe could become neutral, releasing that radiation which would stretch its wavelength as the universe expanded. This release typically occurs at a temperature of a few thousand Kelvin, meaning that the temperature of this background today should be only a few degrees above absolute zero. Moreover, this radiation should have the spectrum of a perfect black body with only tiny imperfections at the 0.1 level or less. This leftover glow, originally called the primeval fireball, and today known as the cosmic microwave background, was discovered in the mid-1960s and has been verified to be black body in spectrum and to have imperfections in it at the one part in 30,000 level. In many ways, it is the most spectacular confirmation of a scientific theory in history. 3. A particular set of ratios for the light elements, even before any stars were ever formed. Even before neutral atoms could form, it was hot and dense enough that the universe couldn't even form atomic nuclei. Only free protons and neutrons could exist, as the instant they fused together to create deuterium, another particle would come along and blast them apart. Only after sufficiently cooling could deuterium stably form, whereupon it would combine with other protons, neutrons, deuterons, and the elements that formed subsequently to produce whatever was possible. But because of how quickly the universe expands and cools, these reactions can only take place briefly. After the dust settles, the universe becomes about 75 hydrogen, 25 helium, 4. 0.01 each helium, 3 and deuterium, and about 0.0000001% lithium-7. Science of Big Bang Nucleosynthesis. The process by which these elements are formed is now standard fare for graduate students and has been observationally validated for galaxies, quasars, gas clouds, and from the cosmic microwave background as well. The overwhelming agreement between the Big Bang's predictions and these observations, including in greater and greater detail, was what led to its widespread acceptance. Initial alternatives fell by the wayside as non-relativistic ideas, like the Milne universe, failed to account for the subsequently verified tests of general relativity, like the pound Rebka experiments. The idea of tired light cosmology where redshift was due to light losing energy as it traveled through space was discredited by the observed sharpness of distant galaxies. And the idea of the early steady state theory, which predicted a low energy background glow of reflected starlight, failed to match the observed spectrum of the cosmic microwave background. However, Note that the Big Bang theory is both a triumph and a jumbled mess. One of the strongest pieces of evidence for the Big Bang also presents one of its biggest challenges. Cosmic background radiation. This faint glow fills the cosmos. It is leftover heat from the explosive Big Bang. Everywhere astronomers gaze, they can measure the temperature of that background radiation. And everywhere, it's almost exactly the same. This condition is known as a homogeneity. The universe does, of course, have big differences in temperature here and there. 
Those places are where stars, planets, and other celestial objects exist. But between them, the background temperature in all directions appears the same. A very frigid 2.7 kelvins, or negative 455 degrees Fahrenheit. The big question, as Eve Silverstein says, is why? This physicist works at the Stanford Institute for Theoretical Physics in California. There, she investigates how certain structures appear to have formed after the Big Bang. Summarizing the sense of mystery she sees in current theories, she says, Nobody promised us that we would understand everything. The seemingly even spread of cosmic background heat suggests that everything that burst out of the Big Bang should have cooled off the same way. But when we look across the universe now, Silverstein says, we see distinct structures everywhere. We see stars and planets and galaxies. How did they start to form if everything had originally started out as one uniform thing? Over the last few decades, astronomers think they may have found an answer to this question. They have measured tiny differences in the cosmic background's temperature. These differences are on the scale of 100,000th of a degree Kelvin, 0.00001K. But if such tiny variations existed right after the Big Bang, they might have grown over time into what we see now as structures. It's like blowing up a balloon. Draw a tiny dot onto an empty balloon. Now inflate it. That dot will end up looking a lot bigger once the balloon is full. Scientists have named this period after the Big Bang inflation. It's when the newborn universe expanded so tremendously that it's truly hard to comprehend. Inflation appears to have been fast, far faster than any expansion before or since. It also took place during a stretch of time so tiny it's hard to imagine. The idea of inflation is well supported by telescope observations. Scientists have not, however, fully proven it. Inflation is also extremely difficult to physically describe. As astronomer Adrian Eric Sek at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill explained the Big Bang was not an explosion of matter into space. It is an explosion of space. Lots of astronomers use the idea of raisin bread to illustrate this. If you leave a ball of fresh raisin, bread dough on a countertop, that dough will rise. The raisins will spread apart from each other as the dough expands. In this analogy, raisins represent stars, galaxies, and everything else in space. Dough represents space itself. Eriksek offers a more mathematical way to think about the expansion of the universe. She said, it's like laying down an image of a grid across all of space with galaxies at all of the points where the lines meet. Now imagine that the expansion of the cosmos is like the grid lines themselves expanding. Everything stays at their places on the grid, but the spacing between the grid lines is expanding. This part of the Big Bang Theory is extremely well proven. But when we imagine a grid, it's hard not to wonder about the edges of that grid. There's no edge, Eric Sek points out. The grid goes infinitely in all directions. So every point seems like the center of the expansion. She emphasizes this because people so often ask if the universe has an edge or a center. But in fact, there is neither. On that imaginary grid, every point is getting farther away from all of the others. And the farther away two points are, the faster they seem to be moving away from each other. This may be hard to wrap your head around, but this is what we see in the data. Space itself is what's expanding. And like Eric Sek says, that grid is infinite. It's not expanding into anything. There's no empty space we're expanding into. So where did the Big Bang happen? Well, everywhere. According to Eric Sek, by definition, the Big Bang is that moment when the infinite number of grid lines were infinitely close together. The Big Bang was dense and hot, but there was still no edge, and everywhere was the center. Eric Sek works to bring theories together with observations. There's a lot of evidence to support the universe's inflation, but what caused that inflation? To answer that, a new source of data may be needed. 
In other words, we may need to look in unexpected places such as the invisible, unidentified substance known as dark matter or ripples in space-time called gravity waves or weird new particle physics. Any of these scientific curiosities may hold the secrets to inflation. Let's start with dark matter. In the late 1970s, astronomer Vera Rubin discovered that galaxies were rotating far faster than their mass should allow. She proposed the existence of unseen matter, dark matter, as the missing mass. Since then, dark matter has become an important part of cosmology. Physicists estimate that more than one fourth of the universe is composed of dark matter. Only four to five percent is the regular matter that fills our everyday lives and also includes all stars, planets, and galaxies. The rest of the universe, almost two-thirds of it, is made of dark energy. But alas, we still don't know what dark matter is. Historically, scientists have looked for clues about the Big Bang among the regular matter we can see. But dark matter is a huge blind spot in the universe. If scientists understood it better, maybe they'd uncover how it and ordinary matter came to be. But until we know for sure how the universe works, it's good to ask lots of questions and come up with new ideas. Beside the dark matter, gravitational waves could also offer clues about the Big Bang's aftermath. As more sensitive telescopes look farther out into space, and therefore further back in time, Scientists hope to spot gravitational waves created shortly after the Big Bang. Such wrinkles in space-time could have formed while the evolving universe changed quickly, like a growth spurt, as would have happened during inflation. Gravitational waves aren't a form of light, so they might offer scientists an unfiltered glimpse of the Big Bang. These gravitational waves could offer a really interesting window on that time, when we don't have a lot of other data. Moreover, it is worth noting that the central feature of all Big Bang cosmological models is a universe that evolves. The past looked different from the present. The present will look different from the future. While these may seem innocuous statements, why the universe evolves is actually a big mystery. So much so, in fact, that astrophysicist Fulvio Melia included the question in his recent paper, where he listed reasons the standard model of cosmology may need to be replaced. The problem of the universe's past has a long pedigree and is linked to one of the most important ideas in all of physics, entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is a physicist's way of saying disorder. According to the second law, any isolated system must evolve from states of low entropy to states of higher entropy. Disorder always increases. If you start with a bunch of atoms all crowded into one corner of a box, they will naturally evolve to a state with atoms spread uniformly around the box. They have thus moved from a highly ordered, low entropy state to a state of maximum disorder and maximum entropy. The important thing about maximum entropy is that once this state is reached, evolution stops. Individual atoms continue to bounce around but the macroscopic state of the box ceases to change. In a sense, time and its direction no longer matter. The past looks exactly like the future, so you cannot tell them apart anymore. Bring this idea to the universe as a whole, and you will quickly see the problem. Since the universe is everything that exists, it is kind of like that box. The second law of thermodynamics says the entropy of the universe can only increase until it reaches a maximum. So the universe must be running down, and it must be heading toward an eventual heat death, where entropy has maximized and no more work can be extracted. In that final equilibrium, there will be no more change and no arrow of time pointing from the past into the future. But that is not the state we are in now. The universe is clearly still evolving. Stars are burning up their nuclear fuel, releasing energy and generating entropy. That must mean the entropy of the universe has not reached its maximum. Based on this, we can conclude that the entropy of the universe must have been much lower in the past, 
And that is where the problem really lies. Why was the entropy of the universe lower in the past? This question is not new. The founders of modern statistical mechanics and thermodynamics were aware of the issue and discussed it at length, even before the rise of modern cosmology. But once scientists developed the Big Bang model of the universe, the problem got more acute. The so-called classic Big Bang. The first version of our standard model of cosmology says the universe began in a hot, dense state, undergoing expansion. The modern version of the standard model adds a period of extreme expansion to this story, a very brief, very early period referred to as inflation. For both the classic and modern standard models, the critical question about the past is the initial condition of the Big Bang, that state under which your model begins its evolution. It turns out that if you pick an initial condition at random, you are much more likely to find one with high entropy than one with low entropy. After all, there are many more ways to arrange a system's components in a disordered fashion than in an ordered one. Based on probability alone, then, the universe should have started in a state that was either already in equilibrium or close to it. That would leave little room for cosmic evolution. The universe would just sit there like our box of atoms in equilibrium. It would experience no change and no time running from the past into the future. Somehow, our universe must have avoided all those high entropy states and started in a very unlikely, very low entropy state. Physicists and philosophers call this the past hypothesis. But what makes this hypothesis correct? Why did the universe begin in such an unlikely state that allowed us to emerge? We do not want to invoke an intelligent designer to make the choice for us. That would be a flagrant case of special pleading. It is noteworthy that some cosmologists thought the brief period of inflation would solve the problem. The hyper-rapid expansion of a small sliver of post-Big Bang space-time into our visible universe was supposed to dilute entropy and allow evolution to continue. But many critics, including Fulvio Melia, argue that inflation models must be fine, tuned to give the right result. The form of a suitable inflationary model and the parameters found in it must be so explicit that the whole thing looks just as cooked up and arbitrary as the past hypothesis itself. Thus, inflation may not solve the problem. So, is Melia right? Is the standard model of cosmology suspect because of the universe's strangely low entropy past? There is no doubt that the past hypothesis is a real problem, both physically and philosophically. It also seems that the standard model does not yet offer a clear solution, and in that sense, Melia is correct. A bigger question is whether any cosmological model could solve the need for a past hypothesis. What would a natural solution to the question of initial cosmic conditions, one without any fine-tuning or special pleading, look like? If a new model could solve this conundrum, it would indeed deliver a powerful argument for going in a new direction. In addition, one of the most astonishing things about this cosmic conundrum revolves around what scientists refer to as cosmic constants. These are the bedrock values that serve as the building blocks of the laws that govern our universe. Consider them as the universal knobs and dials, finely tuned to unimaginable precision. Among them stand giants like the gravitational constant, a force that orchestrates the cosmic ballet of planets and stars, and the speed of light, the cosmic speed limit that shapes the very fabric of space-time. These cosmic constants, in their immutable elegance, evoke a sense of wonder and intrigue. It's as if the universe itself had a blueprint a well-crafted set of instructions etched into the very foundations of reality. The gravitational constant, for instance, holds a pivotal role in determining the interplay of massive bodies on cosmic scales. Even a minuscule adjustment in this constant would ripple through the cosmos, reshaping the orbits of galaxies, stars, and planets in ways that stagger the imagination. Picture a universe where the speed of light was just a fraction different, where the fundamental forces of nature operated on slightly altered terms. In this hypothetical realm, 
the familiar constellations that grace our night sky might never have formed, and the cosmic ballet of particles and energy could have taken an entirely different choreographic path. The implications are profound. A universe with even the subtlest shift in these constants might be unrecognizable to us, if it existed at all. Perhaps stars would have never ignited, galaxies would remain as cosmic dust, and the intricate dance of life as we know it would be but a mere cosmic whisper. This delicate interplay of constants paints a vivid portrait of a universe seemingly tailor, made for the emergence of galaxies, stars, and life. It's a tapestry of precision and balance, woven with threads of mathematics and boundless wonder. As we ponder the mystery of these finely tuned constants, we find ourselves confronted with questions that resonate at the very core of existence. After all, it could be said that in the grand tapestry of the cosmos, the Big Bang Theory provides a compelling narrative of our universe's origin. However, as we probe deeper, we encounter fascinating enigmas that challenge our understanding. The likelihood of the Big Bang occurring perfectly is a question that stirs the curiosity of scientists and enthusiasts alike. It's a reminder that the universe, in all its majesty, still holds secrets waiting to be unraveled. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.